We have a little bit of breaking news to get into here in this video. AMC stock is up 7% on this news. What's going on? What do you need to know as a shareholder in AMC stock? We're also going to get into what in the world is happening in the markets today. Stocks are actually green. It seems like the first time in a long time, but it is, again, another big story mixed bag. What is gold doing? What are bonds doing? What's the dollar doing? What are all of these different things we have been watching actually doing today? Does this make any sense why stocks are higher and potentially what's coming next? And again, I think you're going to like that as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So I'm not going to leave you waiting here. AMC stock is up 6.78%. I said it over and over this weekend. AMC stocks going higher. My personal opinion, a lot higher. This is probably the start of that bigger move higher. If you break out above that 50-day moving average currently at $10.16 per share, things get really exciting. Then your upside cap or upside resistance, if you will, is $25 per share. If you break out above 10, you could see a rapid rise into the high teens, if not into the mid-20s. That's what I'm expecting in the near term. That's not a short squeeze. It's not a MOAS. That's just a short term move. Now, do you trade this short term? Absolutely not. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. That's not the way to play it because this week there are a lot of events that will affect the markets that will affect AMC. But today, AMC stock is doing its own thing more or less. You do have some news. Here is your news that is causing AMC stock to rise almost 7%. Titled, AMC shares rise as Taylor Swift, the Ross tour, sets another record. They say, in addition, AMC is also the theatrical dis distributor for the movie. That means AMC gets more of a cut of this total. Taylor Swift, the Ross tour, which opened October 12th, was expected to cross $200 million at the global box office on Sunday. According to Comscore data, the film has brought in an estimated $203 million worldwide since its release, making it the first pure concert film in history to record more than $200 million in global box office receipts, Comscore said in a statement released Sunday. Adam Aaron wrote on his ex account, 12 of my last 13 tweets, uh, tweets there, there's that amb ambu ambiguous lucky number 13 again, have been about Taylor Swift. Want to know why? Well, there are 200 million reasons why. Taylor Swift's concert film is the highest grossing in history. AMC is, again, the distributor of this film, so they're going to rake in a lot higher overall you know total here their margins are going to be higher because they are the ones that are distributing this film this i think wall street is not really hung up on one movie obviously wall street doesn't give a crap about one movie when it comes down to it we've seen good movies we've seen bad movies doesn't tend to affect AMC stock all too much. I think the biggest thing here is this is really one of the first times you have seen AMC be a distributor of such a large film so far and I do think this potentially opens the door for other you know uh, whether they're mu musicians or other individuals to promote their films through an AMC so it's like creating another subsector of their already legacy business that will have higher margins after all AMC is going to bring in a higher overall margin of this 200 million dollar number but AMC the ticket prices are like double what a normal movie costs. I think the average uh, movie ticket price is like $12, $14, something like that. These movie tickets are over $20, which is hopefully going to help AMC's numbers. You never really know. I guess it's all based on how much AMC spends, right? What, what their costs are. But just looking at this off face value, it should be really good for AMC's numbers. Now, that's not likely to have an effect on this quarter at all because last quarter the quarter we're going to get reported ended on you know September 30th September 31st so you know it's not going to affect these numbers but Wall Street is forward looking so hopefully it'll have a positive 
uh, you know, kind of sentiment towards next quarter's numbers. And maybe we do get some good guidance out of AMC and earnings can actually be good. Now, we've had really good earnings with AMC. Basically, every time AMC has reported earnings, they have been really good. But AMC has been under this court proceeding. So this whole time AMC has been doing great things, it was overshadowed by the upcoming dilution. We've seen that fear wave come and go. It's old news at this point. That's over. AMC stock will start to move more so in line with what the business is doing. That's my personal opinion, and that's a reason why I'm so bullish right here on AMC, because the business is doing good. The business is doing well, but yet AMC stock is still trading lower on this these split-adjusted prices than the bottom back in January when everyone thought AMC was literally going bankrupt literally going bankrupt and amc and and that low was at ten dollars 35 cents amc stock is at nine dollars 76 cents amc is obviously not going bankrupt we've sure gotten some dilution but even on the split adjusted basis you're still lower than where you were back in january so i do think that deserves a pretty aggressive upside correction if you will we we had the downside correction it was way too cor corrected as, as you are right now. So that's where you will get that upside move, at least in my personal opinion. Now, let's get into kind of what's going on here in the markets today. Uh, some of the main stories, SoFi, McDonald's, some of your earnings on Semiconductor did pretty bad. Their stock's down big. McDonald's and SoFi did good on the other hand. McDonald's revenue climbs 14% as price hikes boost U.S. sales. And SoFi had a much smaller loss than expected these stocks kind of have mi mixed reactions they opened up a little bit better kind of sold off especially SoFi. that's one of my larger holdings so some of your small and, and kind of mid-cap stocks they were doing much better in the beginning of trading the very beginning your russell 2000 is now the lagger here on the day it's definitely a kind of staples dividend kind of 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 day for um markets. Now, McDonald's is propping up the Dow because McDonald's is 5% of the Dow. So the Dow is up 1.07% today. S&P 500 up 0.69%. The Nasdaq up 0.7%. The Russell 2000 down here up 0.22%. And the Russell has really been the big lagger here. If you take a look at this chart, the Russell is on pace for one of its worst periods of time ever comparing to the internet bubble and the global financial crisis. You're at 500 days now since you hit a new 52-week high. So I would go out on a ledge and say maybe in the next, you know, three to six months, you're going to see a new all-time high if, if or 52-week high. If you do not see a new 52-week high in the next, uh, you know, 200 days or so, the next six months, roughly, right, two, 200 days. Uh, yeah, you're going to be at the most... I guess, week period that you've ever seen for the Russell 2000. So you've you've been through a lot so far. Again, 500 days since a new 52-week high. That's not a short amount of time. That's, oh, that's what, a year and a half, roughly? That's a long time. So I think you really want to be heavily positioning in these names as of right now. That Again, that's not financial advice, but that is personally what I am doing. Now, as you know, on Friday, we did enter into a technical correction on the S&P 500. One week later, you do tend to be positive about 1.5%. Two weeks later, three weeks later, and one month later, you tend to be down about 2%, and you're only positive 40% of the time. Now, one week later, after you head into a correction, you're positive 66.7% of the time. So historically, you bounce a little bit after you hit that correction over 50% of the time, 66.7% of the time. One By one month later, you're red still and even lower than your 10% correction level about 60% of the time. You're only positive 40% of the time. Three months later, 53.3% of the time, you are slightly in the green. Six months later, 66.7% of the time you're in the green and on average up about 3.1%. And one year later, 80% of the time you are in the green with a return of about 10.1%. So basically getting right back up to your pre-correction level, at least if not surpassing that. So the historical precedent is 
when 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 you go into a correction in the markets, I don't care how bearish you are, I don't care how bad the situation looks, you want to be a buyer. Same thing with this chart with the Russell 2000. I don't give a crap if the Fed says they're going to be higher for the rest of your life. It's BS. They're not going to be. Okay? Don't listen to whatever the, the whatever's going on at the time. You want to be buying and that's just the really the bottom line to it okay you want to be a buyer when stocks look weak even as hard as it is even as you know painful as it is you definitely need to be buying at these levels my personal opinion again that's not financial advice now let's take a look at these stocko tracker data what we're looking at here today for this trading week today is monday hello ready for an exciting week you have 7500 calls currently in the money about 31000 calls out the money in the money puts at 3300 out the money puts at 30 one thousand. So uh, it's it's pretty equivalent, right? Uh, out the money calls almost thirty one thousand in the money, or out the money puts at about thirty one thousand in the money calls at seventy five hundred in the money puts at three thousand. You're really only seeing that out out performance, I guess, outnumbering on the in the money contracts, right? The in the money calls, uh, you know, over two to one for the in the money put. So I do think there is some fuel on the fire here for lack of a better word. Someone's sitting over there with the gas can ready to put it on the fire. And who knows which direction this thing is going to go this week. I think it really depends on the broader markets. Now, again, if you guys missed the videos over this weekend, if you're living under a rock, if you don't care about your portfolio, your position in AMC, your financial future in that sense well let me give you a quick recap today it's at, at 8 p.m eastern standard time apple is going to have an event and that apple event is a first you've, you've never seen a 8 p.m apple event literally ever so we'll see what happens with that that's a big catalyst on on wednesday you're going to get Fed Jerome Powell and the FOMC meeting. That's going to be a huge catalyst. On Thursday, you are going to get Apple earnings, another big catalyst. And on Friday, you're going to get the BLS labor report. That is your unemployment rate. That is your non-farm payroll report. So these are all big catalysts that we have for this week that you need to be looking out for. That's really what is going to move stocks right here and right now. And this Apple event, normally Apple sells off after these Apple events. So we'll really just have to wait and see what is said. Uh, after today's, I believe Apple's up like 1%. Uh, it's You're probably going to have a little bit more optimism heading into this event rather than not. And that does you know, potentially lead to a little bit more of that downside. We'll, we'll obviously have to wait and see what happens. I'm not a fortune teller. Maybe something crazy is announced. Um, but I mean, minus anything huge being announced, you know, Apple probably going to fall. That's the historical precedent for Apple. Now, let's get into the Ortex data here briefly, and then I'll let you guys get on your way today. So we have a short score of 53, $120 million worth of short positions, estimated short interest on free flow at 6.63%, free flow out on loan at 8.11%, shares out on loan 16.03 million, days to cover 0.83, cost to borrow 1.24, and utilization of 37.59. So not the most exciting numbers, but again, I don't think these numbers are correct at all. 6.53% short interest. Who is smoking what? What in the world? That's just crazy. That's just outrageous to even suggest the numbers are that low from Ortex. It, it, there's obviously a couple different things that could be happening. Most importantly, I do think the, the more obvious one is probably a lot of shorts are scared of getting their short positions exposed due to the new SEC rule, and they're probably hiding their short positions. I think that's the safest bet to make, in my personal opinion. Again, I don't know for sure. I'm not a financial advisor. But I believe the short interest is a lot higher. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Now, cost of bar average at 2.32%, cost of bar max at 6.91%, and cost of bar minimum at 1.04%. So nothing too exciting there as well. Again, AMC stock is up about 6% here on the day. If you break up out above that 50-day moving average, that's where things get a lot more exciting from here. That's where AMC stock can make your way into potentially even the mid-20s. So that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Did I miss something? Let me know down below as well. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. As well as that, if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, link down below in the description of this video as well. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.